Do I look different? <gasps> Newsflash, Anime America is now in 3D. <laughs> oh, this is trippy. Look at this. <laughs> I'm an anime girl, senpai. Will you notice me? On a guy? <laughs> Should I just do the rest of the video like this? <laughs> Would that be a little too freaky for you all? I'm supposed to do two reviews in one video with this cute face. Hi. All right, all right, let's change the filter. Now I'm Lawyer Kitty. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> for those of you who get the reference, you get it. And I should do it like this. Like that, like that. Maybe. <laughs> How does the DreamWorks filter work better for anime than this? Hi. Hello. Why are my eyes brown? They're <laughs> my eyes are supposed to be blue, and why am I bulging? It's going to be a night to remember. Hell yeah. I feel so stylistic this way. Like I'm a film director for an independent company. What could be going on in my head right now? But is that thing, does that thing say, like, parental advisory? What? Parental advisory explicit content. I mean, I said I wasn't for children. <laughs> now I'm a s'more. Hey. Ow. <laughs> Help. <laughs> oh, this is nightmare fuel. I don't know, I think these filters might be a little sus if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Oop, I popped out of existence. <laughs> okay, but in all seriousness, <laughs> I was just having fun with some filters. Uh, we're gonna talk about two movies that I saw in theaters recently, brought to me by Mad Men. The first movie I got to watch was Earwig and the Witch, Studio Ghibli's first 3D film. And just as a disclaimer, I did buy my own ticket because I was just curious. I ended up sharing an image uh, to Mad Men saying like, Hey, I'm going to go see uh, Earwig and the Witch in theaters, and they actually shared my tweet. Senpai noticed me. So. This was directed by Goro Miyazaki. This is Studio Ghibli's first 3D film. It is based off of a novel called Earwig and the Witch. It's a, it's a children's book. It was written by the same author who wrote Howl's Moving Castle, so Ghibli is a fan of this particular author. It's just about a little girl who gets dropped off at an orphanage from her mother. Her mother is on the run because a bunch of witches are chasing after her and being with her mother be a little too dangerous, so... Earwig has to live in the orphanage. Years roll by, Earwig is a smooth talker. She knows how to get what she wants just by just smooth talking everybody around her. The girl knows what she wants and she's gonna get it. And because she lives in this kind of lifestyle, she doesn't want to leave the orphanage. She's got, she's got it too good here at this orphanage. But then suddenly these two random people come to the orphanage and they just randomly decide to adopt her. They take her to their house and it turns out one is pretty much a demon and the other one is a witch. The witch needed an extra pair of hands around the house while the demon just wanted her to shut up because he just wants to be left alone. Now this movie has been getting a lot of backlash because it's in 3D. It's not up to Studio Ghibli's standards. It's short, it ends abruptly. It's definitely not their best work. Here's how I've been putting it to everyone on Twitter, and even Phantom Strider tagged me on Twitter asking what my opinion was. If you look at this as a typical Studio Ghibli film, if you hold it to that high of standard, you will be disappointed because this is very short, uh, the lighting and the colors just do not pop, and... It just feels a little lackluster compared to their past films. If you look at this as a regular movie, it's cute, but short, the pacing is off, and it ends abruptly. So it's gonna be like a mix. If you look at this as a Studio Ghibli experiment, this is just Goro Miyazaki trying new things, hiring new artists to take Ghibli in a different direction, not a brand new direction away from 2D animation like Disney. Zing. But just to see what Ghibli will look like in 3D. So it's not as polished as the other films because this is an experiment, it is a short film. This is just Goro curious to see where he can take 3D with Ghibli. Then I think you might be able to appreciate the film. 
And that's just the bottom line. I think like a lot of people are just giving too much hate to this film because it's in 3D. It's not as good as the other Ghibli films. It's just a waste of your time. And they should be ashamed for trying to try 3D. Shame. Shame. But can't studios just experiment a little bit? I mean, even though I bash Disney for how they just mar just make the 3D realm just marketable, they still have their short films that allow them to experiment with different things. Because let's face it, they're only catering to what the audience wants and feeding us like a five minute short of what they're capable of doing. And a lot of diehards and animation enthusiasts want more films like that. If anything, I think Moana was supposed to be more like that paper short film, which that would have been so beautiful, like one of the most beautifully animated films of all time. But they just had to play it safe and just give it the Disney 3D polish. Woo. Still a pretty good film, but it, it would have been interesting to see that kind of art style. I mean, you do see it with Spider-Man the Multiverse because they were they cared about the story and the presentation, which that's why that's like one of the best 3D films of, of our modern day history. If you haven't seen it, go watch it because that's a damn good film. My point is just let Ghibli experiment. Just let them see where this technology can take them. I think Hayao Miyazaki is a traditionalist. He cares so much about his art and how he presents his stories. And I think Goro wants to respect that, but just see where else he can take it. Because the future just keeps getting bigger and grander with more technology, more advancements in art that we couldn't even fathom today. And with future generations, they're just gonna keep experimenting with the newest stuff. Because we have to evolve, we have to see what is new, what is creative, what is something that people are drawing their attention to, and see if you can adapt what you know to this new advancement. Just best of both worlds, in my opinion. I think from the art style, it's their character designs are fantastic in this movie. Like, especially Mandrake. Oh, the Mandrake is so good in this film. Just, just see Earwig and the Witch just for the Mandrake. He's a cool character. I will admit that Earwig herself is a little... <laughs> she doesn't really have an arc. She just knows what she wants and when she's put into this different environment she has to try to shape the environment to cater to her the girl does not change she's just like uh-uh everyone around me changes to meet my demands you gotta admire that spirit but at the same time you're just a little confused because it's like she doesn't really change and she's the protagonist and you would think like you know for a children's story she would like you know try to present some sort of moral of the story and just meet halfway with these uh, new parents of hers because they're changing so much for her and yet she's not will willing to do the same for them. She's just doing her sweet talk nature to have them bend down to her. And at the same time, it just feels like it's more of a focus on Mandrake and the witch. I think her name was like Yaga, Yaba. Like it was more about their backstory when Earwig discovers about their past, how they know her mother, and just seeing the pain that they had suffered, and just seeing what they used to be, what they are now, and just seeing how Earwig interacts with this kind of information. Though I will admit, because of that abrupt ending, I wasn't really given the answer of certain things. I'm not gonna spoil it here. If you want me to spoil it, I'll leave a comment down below. But there was just like a few questions that were left unanswered because of the abrupt ending. But overall, I think Earwig and the Witch is not bad. See it. It's just Studio Ghibli experimenting and having fun. And there is some good to this film, especially Mandrake. The music is a bit meh. It's not as whimsical or charming. I think they're trying to go with this whole like groovy feeling to this groovy story. And I think for the most part, it does work, but it just feels like I'm listening to the same soundtrack over and over again. There really isn't that much background music for some scenes and you're just left in awkward silence, just hearing the characters just like interact with each other and hearing like crickets and the wind and it's like there should be some kind of music in the background like maybe some soft piano or something as these characters are talking but despite what the reviews are saying online I'd say just go watch it like if you want to wait for it to like come out on streaming services that's fine just I I'd say just check it out when you can 
I say it's it's worth the money just for you know the visual curiosity just to see what Ghibli can do with this and as for my second film <laughs> Uh, Mad Men presented me with a ticket to go see a press release of Demon Slayer. And thank you Mad Men for that awesome ticket and for allowing me to go with my friend Tiffany who kind of filled me in on this movie. Because I don't read the manga. I watched season one. But I, I haven't read the manga. Basically Demon Slayer Mugen Train is one of the Demon Slayer arcs compressed into a movie. And I think it's because this is like one of their smallest arcs that, you know, you could have spent like a couple of episodes on this, but making it into a movie was worthwhile. Because I think they just wanted to play around with the animation, just get that movie budget into this arc and just mess around with the cinematography and the presentation and the action. And it felt like a movie experience, even though this was just a long episode of Demon Slayer. And what I mean by that is... Sometimes with anime movies, they just focus on one thing. And when that one thing is over, when they deal with it, that's it. Demon Slayer Mugen Train deals with the entire arc, including the event that happens after the Mugen Train incident. For those of you who read the manga, you know what I'm talking about. No spoilers or else Nezuko is not going to pat you on the head. Think about that. Don't ruin the movie for everyone. Don't spoil the manga. <laughs> Do it for Nezuko. She'll give you a little pat on the head in your dreams if you're a good boy and girl. Hmm. The movie immediately picks up after the last episode of season one. And that's why I said this is just a long episode of Demon Slayer. Where Tanjiro, Zenitsu, and Inosuke, they have to sneak onto the train. And I wonder why. <laughs> You can't take him anywhere. You can't take that boy anywhere. I have a complicated relationship with Inosuke. It's like, okay, you're adorable, but oh, sometimes I hate you. But yeah, to avoid the cops, they have to sneak up on the train. They got their tickets, but because of that little incident, they have to sneak on the train. And they encounter one of the Hashiras that they met towards the end of season one of Demon Slayer. His name is Rengoku. He is the Flame Hashira. Uh, he's been assigned to this mission, and I think Tanjiro just meets up with him, just to try to help him with this mission, but also to learn more about the flame dance that his father basically taught him. And it started off as like a simple mission of just killing a bunch of demons on the train, but of course not everything goes according to plan, as the demon that we all met in the last episode of season one, Enmu, uh, he is the villain of this movie. Uh, he pretty much lures everyone on the train into a deep sleep, making it more possible for him to not only just kill every human instantly, but also send his minions to the Demon Slayers to try to infiltrate their dreams and just eliminate them that way. Because if he goes anywhere near them, they're gonna smell him, they're gonna snap out of their dreams, and bam, 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 as Demon Slayers do. And so we get to see each of the dreams uh, of each of our Demon Slayer characters. Inosuke's is interesting. Zenitsu is Pretty cute. Uh, Rangoku's uh, pr pretty much like a little flashback of his past, so it's very interesting for him to have a dream about that. But as for Tanjiro, mm. oh my baby, oh that's hard. Mm. Of course he gets the one dream that was the hardest to leave. Oh, the poor baby, the poor poor baby. So basically, you're watching the film to see how they get out of the dreams, how they're gonna defeat Enmu. And for those who read the manga, they know exactly what happens after this segment, and... Oh... Oh, things go down at the end. Oof. No spoilers. Trying so hard not to spoil. Don't spoil the movie. Do it for Nezuko. She'll give you a pat on the head. Don't spoil it. Overall, this is a damn good movie, hence why it is the best movie of 2020. It is hitting box office records all throughout Japan. Every Demon Slayer fan is just really looking forward to this. Treat this like it is a long episode of Demon Slayer, because that's pretty much what it is. It is the Mugen Train arc compressed into a, a movie. That's what you're gonna get. And season two was just announced. If you don't watch this film, a major part of the story 
It's just gonna be like maybe maybe told in a flashback, and you're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, that was a good part of the manga. Why why didn't you put it in season two? Well, there was a movie. They made a movie. Watch the movie, and then season two. You've been warned. As the movie itself, the animation was stellar. The pacing was well done. The emotions just hit you right there. Mm, so that's a good film. <laughs> Yeah, I was a little confused with the the event that happened after the train incident because I just thought, oh, that's the end of the movie. Wait, we're still we're still going. What's going on? What, what's all of this? And Tiffany was kind enough to come with me to watch the film. She explained to me this is the entire arc compressed into a movie, so this was just part of the arc. And from this point onwards, we're gonna continue this way with this character. And I'm like, so boy, so definitely if you're a Demon Slayer fan watch the film. If you've never seen Demon Slayer, you might be a little confused as to what's going on, how they can do these abilities, who each character is. So definitely try to watch season one before watching this film. It's good. It is a pretty good film. You will not be disappointed. I mean, like, Demon Slayer as a story is still pretty basic with, you know, the main character on a mission and having to fight several demons. It's a shonen that's been done several times, but it's still presenting it in a new way. A lot of people are liking this over other shonens that are similar to this because of the characters and the animation, the aesthetics. Everything that goes into this series is what makes Demon Slayer so good. Or at the very least just makes it attractive because, you know, a story like Demon Slayer has been done. But you're there for the characters and you're there to watch some damn good action, so. You can't be disappointed with Demon Slayer. It's good. Watch the first season. Watch the film. You will not be disappointed. You're going to be there for a good time. So overall, I, I liked both films. Haters are going to hate Earwig and The Witch. But I liked it. I liked it just as like a little art experiment. But that's just me being an animation fan. I just wanted to see where they went. And I wasn't too disappointed. As long as I treat it like a Ghibli experiment, I will not be disappointed. And if I see it on DVD, I'm probably going to pick it up. I just love Ghibli. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to do worst to best Studio Ghibli films. I will watch all the Ghibli films, rank them from worst to best. Let me know if you want to see that. Leave your answers in the comments down below. And again, if you're a huge Demon Slayer fan, you will not be disappointed with this film. It is amazing to watch. So when it hits theaters, check it out. In Australia, it will be hitting theaters all throughout Australia on February 25th, so book your tickets, practice social distancing, and have a good time. Coming up next, I think I'm gonna do a first episode impression of a little anime called Rito the Healer. There's no point in saving my soul, it's already too late for me. So stick around for that, more awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned to Anime America. Bye. Where is anime taking us this time? Hey there, if you like what we do on this channel, be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. If you wish to support us financially, we do have a Patreon page with numerous rewards to fit your budget. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at Anime America, and be sure to check out our other channel, Pop Spectrum. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned to Anime America.